Hello, I'm Rick and welcome to my diecast workshop. Here we have a little beach buggy that arrives sort of not exactly free and for gratis, but I didn't buy that. I bought a Mercedes Pullman and this happened to come in the box with it. With a couple of other little Corgi Juniors. The Aston Martin, James Bond Aston Martin is a total it's an embarrassment to put Aston Martin on the name play. That's gone straight in the ground to get the tool box, toy box. But this, when I saw this, it just put a big grin on my face because and back in 79, 80-ish, I used to have one of these. Not for very long, I think I only had it for about three months. <coughs> but it was three months of pure fun and laughter. The damn thing was always giving some sort of mechanical problem with the Volkswagen, I'm sure it was a 1600 engine I had in it, 1606 or, it could have been the 1303, I'm not sure. But uh, as you can see, I've taken it, taken the rivets out and got the interior out of it. And the video jumps about a bit, basically because I'm suffering from beginner's syndrome and some clips have gone missing. Some clips have come out not in the right order and the other thing is it was cold in the workshop so the bodywork I tended to put on one side. The At the moment I've got a paper clip, a heavy duty paper clip which I'm making the roll cage with. <coughs> I've got underneath it a little small paper clip that I use just to get a template to get a rough idea the size and shape I wanted and then I'm going to solder it up <coughs> the the car when I saw this car when I got it out and I looked at it I thought ah oh, you know it's one of the easiest shapes and easiest profiles to copy so why haven't they why have they got big steps in it and why haven't they come open the engine up like it should be I suppose it's all down to costs and expenses with them so a lot of the time in doing this project has been used <coughs> using body filler to make the body cast in the right shape and using a grinding wheel to make the engine the right shape because basically when it comes out of a box it's just a square lump of die cast that has a moulding resembling the engine on the back of it. Here you can see me struggling. I've got this little mini vise which is really handy for stuff like this but it can be very fiddly. And my big hands don't always fit in it too well. And this didn't work anyway. I soldered the first bit on all right, but when I came to doing the second bit, it was too. The metal was too thick, and it just the solder on the other side just dropped off, or it went weak, and Brickland fell off very shortly afterward. So I ended up redoing it again, but I did. I brazed it this time, and that worked a lot better. Just put a little bit of flux on there. There's a big myth with flux that you need to paste it on. You don't. You literally only need to use enough flux to cover the, to, to do the job you're doing. I do a bit of plumbing, and the amount of times you see people putting too much flux on, it's out of the world. Now here I'm detailing the interior. I'll actually show that I actually paint it later on in the video, but I've painted it there. I've painted it satin black. And I've got my Molotov chrome pen out and some red insulation tape. And I'm just putting some fine detail inside the, inside this open kind of uh, driving area. 
basically because I could. Basically because I was just having fun. It was just sort of sat there thinking, well, what was mine? I remember my having the three-point harness and I remember the roll cage. <coughs> I remember the Volkswagen dashboard and the steering wheel and stuff, bits and pieces like that. And the wheels. There were steel, big steel wheels on it with the holes in it. I don't remember what they're like. Is it mini light or something like that? Wheels. Or Ross style. Ross style wheels. But they were massive. <coughs> this is very fiddly. And you see, you just haven't got enough hands to do the job. But we get there in the end. And I've come inside, I'm, in, I'm inside my back room at the moment while the workshop, the heater's on in it, I'm getting it warmed up so I can actually venture back in there and do some more. This wasn't too bad, I just brought some of the stuff I just painted in and just brought it in to dry. <coughs> Me Molotov. 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 Chrome pen. Which I don't use an awful lot, but on this it just seemed highly appropriate. The engine, the engine has been painted the silky black, and I'm just using this to make all the details. And I don't know if you can see them when we get my hand out of the way. But I've actually carefully reamed and ground and cutting this out the engine shape out of what was, like I said, a big block of die casting. These little vehicles, they're like four-wheeled motorbikes. In fact, a motorbike's probably got more practical sense, practical use to it, because with a box on the back of a motorbike, you can probably carry more luggage than you can in these. They have no boots, no bonnet. If you needed to take, well, the engine just slips out anyway, often a problem. And the body just lifted off in, I think it took about an hour, into one clip. And you could literally lift the bodywork off the chassis. Built with Volkswagen Beetle floor base on your own. No, no big deal. Huh? I think my body was made. The body I had for mine was made by a firm, by a fiberglass firm in Kent, Norfolk, somewhere around there. Yeah, like a motorbike. When you get to the coast and you're driving down the water edge on the beach, it is really fantastic. We're jumping back a bit now. This is back. In, back this is back in the workshop. It's still pretty cold in there, or cool in there. So I'm just working up to getting the paint out. I've done the stripping and the cleaning the buffing. Most of the stripping was done on the burnishing wheels. In fairness, the paint was pretty stubborn, didn't want to move, and I couldn't be bothered with uh, caustic soda. So I just put it on the burnisher and polyped it basically. Why wheeled it all off? And now I'm clipping the chassis frame. As you can just see there how it's now not square anymore. And you can see on the base plate how I'm... That lump was square with the outside edges of the base plate when I started. Well, right up to the edge of where the exhaust is. That's all been ground off and ground away. 
And we're going to give it a coat of grey primer to start everything off. Uh, I've gone for that because basically the colour I'm painting it, I want to put a black surface down first, which is handy because I wanted a black surface for the back cushioning and the engine compartments. Anyway, so this is working out nicely. And I'm using aerosol tins <coughs> out of convenience as much as anything. Uh, as Bob Willis will tell you, I've listened to him and watched him. And I don't see the point in getting my airbrush, airbrushes. Like you can see in the left hand of the little clamp there is the compressor. I've got the I've got a collection of airbrushes. But I don't see the point in using them. When the colour I want is in a little aerosol tin, the primer, which cost this primer cost next to nothing, I a couple of quid from a household store. And it does the job fantastically good. Right. You can't ask for better really. And the finish you can get with these is second to none. I'm just going over the primer now. I've, I've given it a little sand back, but I'm going over it now with black paint just to paint the areas that I want painting black black and dust the rest of the area. Now that is an old thing from painting the cars. Once you put primer on them, you tend to go around the primer and give a little dust coat, not covering it, just like a little a light dusting of black paint over the primer and you sand that back you know and you know when you've got all that black off it that you're down to a level surface and just, that's the interior you see it's been painted this is all satin black by the way a clear um quick coat clear you know, whatever Paint. Now we're going to the red paint and if you can see there where it's been filled where I've taken it from a square edge to a rounded edge as it should be. The engine area underneath and the back seats while we're all masked off and taped up. The roll cage is taped up nice and black and now it's just a case of letting that dry and that's basically the colour mine was. Red. I had a choice. I could have had metallic red or flat red. There's the paints I use. Plastic coat. And there we are. That's the finished article. That's just basically how I remember mine being. Well, it did have headlights on it and indicators and what, but hey, I'm not exactly going to be going far in that one. Rolls quite nicely. You can see the chrome edge on the windscreen. Detailed the roll cage, the, the roll cage is in it, detailed the seats, put the harnesses in, the chrome on the dashboard and the handbrake and the gear stick. I reamed out the wheels to make them look as close as I could to them. Look a bit scuffy there, but not look too bad there. Anyway. I hope you're pleased with the end result. I hope it looks all right. Hope you're happy with it. I am. It's brought back happy memories for me, and I've enjoyed doing it. I enjoyed doing most of them, but this has just been a bit of fun, a bit of a laugh, and a bit of a walk down memory lane for me. So please click and subscribe. Leave any comments you want, as they are. I'm still learning, so it's all welcome. I'll see you again soon. Thank you.